Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Christopher Brown. I am your host, as always, Christopher Brown, as they say, have said numerous times before. If you say your name enough, people will remember it. So Chris Brown, Chris Brown, Chris Brown. It is March 17th, St. Paddy's Day here in North America, around the world, celebrating the luck of the Irish. And we decided to do something a little bit different when celebrating the luck of the Irish. And we're going to talk about horror films and the resurgence that we are seeing here in North America of horror films coming back and making a, a run at the box office with Scream, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, with Evil Dead Rises coming out, with uh, Candyman last year. And we wanted to talk a little bit more about what is behind this and where this is all coming from. And to do that, of course, as always, we bring in our horror expert, the man from down south, Mr. David Mercer, author, horror lover. Thank you so much for doing this, David. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, I, I appreciate being on here. I I, uh, I I love your show for 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 one thing, and and it's, and it's been it's been great. Uh, you know, being being on here. I think this is my. Third, third time, third, third time. time. Wow, I'm, I'm I'm an old hand now. I lean back. Uh, oh, actually, let me say. So my daughter made this for me. I, I'll show you that first. So for everybody on the phone, she took the cover from my three books and put it on the front of a T-shirt. So as I walk around, I'm I'm a walking billboard now. So so I thought that was pretty pretty awesome that she did that for me. And that uh, is awesome. We will talk about your third book that is uh, coming out, if I'm not mistaken, shortly later on in the episode. But we want to talk about horror films. And now for anyone who uh, is aware, there is a great St. Patrick's Day horror film franchise out there. And I would say watch the first one and then just ignore the last four of them. And that is the Leprechaun franchise. And I wanted to start off with a great quote from it, a quote that I've used on numerous occasions in the past. And that is, I'll not rest till I have me gold. Curse this well that me soul shall dwell till I find me magic that breaks my spell. David, 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 I got to ask the question. What's your thoughts on the Leprechaun franchise? <laughs> Well, so so the first movie, right? The Leprechaun movie, way back when, had had Jennifer Aniston. That's so right. Had, oh so my god, I forgot. That. Automatically, I am a fan of that movie. Yeah, there's there's very few times where I've seen Jennifer Aniston where I didn't say, you know, after I shut my my mouth and pull my jaw back up, that that I didn't say, you know, I'm a Jennifer Aniston fan. So. So a movie with her has to be extremely bad for me not to be a fan of it. Jennifer, if you're out there, you know, anyway. But it, it's one of those things where that, that was a fun movie. My, my whole take with horror, and I just got to click through there. I apologize. I, I closed something and did not close. So whenever I get a chat message, you're going to get a nice little tick, 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 tick. So, it's so like that is the, gone. the call is coming from inside the house, Dick. Oh yeah, it's calls from inside the. Uh, imagine that nowadays, it's like the calls coming from Verizon. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah>. What? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so that movie was fun, and for me, you know, I, I saw a quote the other day that someone did. So this is not an original quote, but somebody asked him why they wrote horror, and I can't remember his name right now, but he said he writes horror because horror are books about hope. You know, if you think about it. It's, it's not about the, you know, we're getting ready to kill everybody in the story that I'm writing. It's about the hope that one of them or a couple of them may survive. So that was why this person wrote horror was because it was about hope. Uh, myself, I just have a lot of things I need to, to take, you know, frustrations I need to take out from the past and when I was in high school and all the good fun stuff. So, you know, a lot of cannon fodder in my yearbook, if you will. <laughs> We, we are seeing a resurgence, like I said at the top of the show, uh, of horror films coming out. Uh, just even in the last, literally, first two months of this uh, year, 2020, we have seen the the brought but the the sort of the the hopefully resurgence of the scream franchise we have yes. seen the resurgence of the texas chainsaw massacre franchise which we will discuss <laughs> a little bit more later on but and then even last year we saw candy man come out 
is Hollywood trying to recapture the youth, the sort of the the youth that was the 80s and 90s with these retelling of the same story with a sort of the same storyline? I think they are. If, if, if you look at it, you know, the people who are creating these stories now, the ones that are doing it for the right reasons and not just purely for money and that, hey, the screen has a big name, right? You know, the people are most likely, you know, people that grew up watching those movies. So they were fans of that genre. They, they liked it. They remembered how good it was. And they're trying to, you know, pay sort of homage to it. In fact, my, my last book that I just published, that it's a zombie story. And that's what I did in that is I enjoyed so many zombie book, books and movies over the years that I'm like, going, I'm going to write one. So I'm hoping that that's the reason for the people doing these remakes and stuff like this. The only problem is a lot of them aren't very good. Yeah, it's 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 one of it's like, you know, the first one was better. And and but don't get me wrong, not all the remakes that we, we, we're going to talk about today, you know, are, are worse than the original uh, there's a couple that I think did just as good a job, if not better than the original, as far as for additional content, right? So it's one where you have the original that you loved and you still love it, but the other one, you were happy you watched it, right? There wasn't any bad taste in your mouth afterwards. Um, so I'm that, looking that forward for to tell having... for you telling me which ones those are, because I, I am on the complete opposite spectrum of that statement there, Dave. There you go. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Now, I, I did not, uh, we, we, we talked about a few we were going to talk about before. Uh, Candyman was actually not in my list because I haven't seen the new one yet. So I okay. am curious, how did they do on the new one? Is it, was, it, was it great? Was it horrible? Or was will... it, uh, go ahead. Is it, did they water it down? Yes. Is, yeah, that's and, what and... happens. And that's, and I think that's going to be the common theme that I, I say here a lot because it, it, this, for those who are about to send me negative feedback, please send it to crossborderphotography at gmail.com and I'll put it in the filing cabinet. We talk about the woke culture that we have and not pissing people off and not upsetting people anymore, much anymore. And I find that the, the, the movies of 1990s, the movies like the original Scream, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm even going back to the nine, like early 90s, early 80s here with Freddy yeah. Krueger. Like you could get away with so much more in those movies. And then when you watch today's retelling of the same story, I'm finding it's going, I feel like the studio is holding back because they don't want to piss yes. people off. Yes. Yes, I even heard in, uh, Colin Farrell talking about smoking in the latest Batman for Penguin that he wasn't allowed to smoke even the old giant, you know, uh, cigarette things or whatever with the big giant holder. They wouldn't even allow him to do anything like that. I'm like, you know, that's just, you know, you know and you know, it's just, we want horror. I want horror that's going to scare the you know what out of me. Um, I, I want horror like, you know, Evil Dead, the, one of the first ones we, we, we'll, we'll talk about. I mean, that was one where there's the pencil scene, if you remember, that got me still. I mean, I've seen that movie 30 times over my lifetime at least, and then once about two weeks ago, and when that pencil hit, I'm like, oh, wait, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that was a good scene, <laughs> horrible, but good. Yeah, and it made you think, made you jump, and all that, and I, and that's what I want. I don't want the watered down, and 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 you know, and it's one of the things where one of the things I appreciate about the world culture. Okay, so I'm I'm you know I'm I'm old school as far as that goes. I'm old, uh, but it's one of the things I appreciate when they make us think about different topics. I, I love that. That's great. I want to think about all people. My the company I work for, we help websites become accessible to people with disabilities. So I think about different things all the time. What I don't like is when they have to make the woke culture built into the plot where it wasn't before, right? It's like, you know, don't force it in there. It's it's like, you know, Ghostbusters, the remake of that, the latest, latest one, it was, or it was a continuation, really. It was such a good, fun movie for everybody. And, and I enjoyed that one. You didn't like that? Okay. Uh, I, I like that movie. I like and, that uh, it was filmed in my hometown, so I'll say oh, that. There you go. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed that movie. It, 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 it was sort of nostalgic for me. It didn't, uh, let's put it this way, it didn't piss me off. 
right? <laughs> Which is, you know, some movies, you know, it's like you go see them or I'll watch them with my, with my daughter and it's one of, I'm like, this is a remake. I'm probably going to get mad. <laughs> yeah. And that's my big concern is, well, we are a little bit different ages here, probably a few years on either side for myself. Um, I, I, I'm concerned that we are desensitized, desensitizing horror films and just movies in general to the, the point where you don't get those jump scares anymore, right? Yeah. Like I remember watching some of the horror films of the 80s and 90s and going, holy crap, it scared my pants off me. Even, and it's not even a horror film, like even like the very first Jurassic Park, you yeah. knew it was about dinosaurs, but I'm sorry, when that T-Rex ate the guy off the toilet, I refused to go to the washroom for like a week because I was afraid that was going to happen. And that stuck with me, right? I oh, don't the, see that these days. Yeah, and 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 it was uh, was Alice Cooper was in the movie Prince of Darkness. Did you ever see that? Yep. Had uh, AJ Simon, if you remember him, was in it. I don't remember his real name. Sorry. Sorry to the actor. I just remember the character he played that I liked. Uh, so, but anyway, so that movie Prince of Darkness. It was basically for anyone who hasn't seen it. It's it's about an alternate dimension, and one of the ways that they would see into the alternate alternate dimension was through mirrors. And when I got in the car after watching that movie, my, my cousin was with me and I reached my hand up to the mirror in the rearview mirror, like I was going to push my hand into it. He's like, don't even joke. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, just don't go there. <laughs> he's like, that movie freaked me out. And I'm like, I liked that. I want a movie that's going to freak me out. Well, um, and I do I too. And, and we're, we're, we'll start talking about some of these movies that have recently come out and sort of the franchises that come along with it. And we'll start with the Evil Dead franchise because you've made yes. mention to it a few times here. And for those who don't know, this was Evil, Evil Dead is the sort of the, the uh, catalyst that we now know started Sam Raimi's career back in the, I think if I'm not mistaken, the very first one came out in the early 70s. I was going to look it up, but I just didn't have time to do it. But I think it came out in the early 70s, if late 70s, early 80s. 81. If I'm, 81, so. 81 was the first. I, I pulled up the IMDb's before. There you go. That. So I, 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 I enjoyed it. I got I got introduced to Evil Dead when I was in uh, college and university because my friend was a massive Bruce Campbell fan and he showed me Army of Darkness and he said, you haven't seen Evil Dead, you need to watch these other two. And I watched them and it's like as much as the like the stop motion claymation skeletons were shitty, it was yeah, yeah. fantastic. Um, I, 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 I look back on those first three movies of Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and if you've seen them, you know I'm about to say, Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 are literally the same movie, shot for <laughs> shot almost. Oh God, spoiler alert. <laughs> but due to some studio interference, it was shot for shot remake. And then Ash versus, uh, Ash versus the Army of Darkness or, or Ash versus Evil Dead? Ash, I think it was Ash versus Evil Dead. Evil Dead. So we, 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 I grew up with those movies and I say grew up as in like, I, I came to them quite late in the early 2000s, but I, 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 I love those movies. What was your yes. thoughts on the originals before we talk about the remakes and the TV show that we currently have? Yeah, and I'll correct myself. The Army of Darkness was the movie. Army the, of Darkness, Ash that's versus, right. Ash versus Evil Dead is the series. Uh, which I did enjoy that. Just seeing, seeing, you know, seeing Ash come back just made me smile. Like I said, that was fa pure fan service was that movie and, or that TV series. So, so I, I nothing but kudos for, for them on that. Uh, for the original movie, so just going back and watching it now, right? So, so knowing some of the things that were going to happen and all of that, as I've already mentioned, the, the fact with the pencil, uh, but it was interesting to me watching it now. There was things I didn't catch the first time. And and there may be mild spoilers, but I highly doubt it. You know, that anybody who's watching it's not. If you it. have not uh, seen Evil Dead in 2022, you stop yes. watching this right now and go turn exactly. it on. And, and if you on have, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, we better just get that out of the way. Uh, but remember the dagger at the very beginning of the movie that they find in the basement. I forgot 
that blood spurts through that dagger when he stabbed somebody. I just forgot that completely. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. I didn't know. I, and I'm thinking about it from the special effects side of it as much as anything. But I was like, I forgot that scene. I remember, you know, I remember the pencil after I jumped, right? But I would forgot that and thought that was very cool. Horror fans unite. The Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown is pleased to offer a free audible copy of David Mercer's newest book, Living Death, A Love Story. The book is about Nick, who having suffered the horrible loss of his wife, plays the hero and rescues Jenny from her abusive boyfriend. Deciding that he has one last adventure in him, he invites her on a cross-country road trip. Little did they know that the world, as they knew it, was ending. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca to enter into the draw. Simply tell us your favorite horror film by April 14th and be entered. Yeah, I, I, I remember that. Like, I, I'm when I watch movies, I watch them more for the cinematography. Like, I love the storyline, I love the horror, but I watch for the cinematography because that's. I, I like watching what the director is trying to tell. Right. Yeah. I, I try to. I try to pay attention to the storyline, but I like watching the. the I, I. I remember watching that for the very first time, and I remember just the establishing shots, the 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 car, the them driving in the car to the actual cabin. It was a great movie. Now. I, I I say that with all respect to the 2013 version yes. of Evil Dead. And yeah. what they tried to do with the 2013 reboot, or the soft reboot, as they like to call yes. it, um, was try to forget what happened in the first three movies. And this is a new storytelling with horror films like Evil Dead, you need characters like Bruce Campbell. Yes. Bruce Campbell made Evil Dead. It's yes. like if you took Jason, it's like, actually, that's it's a perfect example. It's like taking the Halloween franchise and doing Season of the Witch, the third one, <laughs> which you went, what? What, what, what is? is going on here? <laughs> so I was, I don't want to say, angry that they tried something different because honestly it's Hollywood and they always try something different with things that work in the past but right. it was a letdown for me what about yourself well now for me so so in the first one just to come back to that for a second the special effects to me still hold up right other yep. than the, the claymation stuff is a little bit as you get into the other movies but it but it's it like holds quintessential up. 80s quintessential oh, exactly. 80s fx and and the girlfriend, when she was giggling like that, was just so creepy still. And, and of course, you know, everybody mentions the whole living woods, right? They, they invented that scene and that, that camera that, you know, that's on some kind of pulley or something flying through the woods. So all of those things from the first one, just make it. I mean, there's nobody, if you like horror and you haven't seen the first Evil Dead, you know, watch it. It's, it's, you're you're going to enjoy it. Uh, you're not going to look at the special effects and go, oh, that's just ketchup. Yeah, no, it's 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 good. Uh, the the second movie, or the remake, if you will, um, I liked it. Um, it didn't make me mad. I enjoyed the movie, right? As far as that goes, I liked some of the things that they did to to change it up just a little bit. The drugs was an interesting interesting twist. I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, the the fact that uh, they had the very beginning of it where it's sort of they're showing a little more of what happened in the cabin before the movie starts right as far as for the the family that was there and all that uh, since a lot of people watching it had probably watched Evil Dead I didn't think they were giving anything away as far as having that scene so I appreciated those things uh, now I don't know but in this in the Evil Dead remake there is a car in the front lawn of the cabin. I thought that was Ash's car. Is that not Ash's car? Because I thought it was a broken down car that she sets on one time and it reminded me exactly of Ash's car. Now I could be mistaken, but I thought that was a nice sort of throwback to it if it was. And if it was, I, I, I wanna say yes, it is because of the post credit scene. Yes. But my my issue is 
they tried to make a standalone movie where this is a different story from what you knew and told. I it could be, and like you said, there was a sort of an off comment where one of the characters did mention something, but I just. I, I don't know if Sam Raimi gave the blessing of this movie, to be honest, and maybe he did, maybe he didn't. And that's where I'm a little hesitant to say it was the Evil Dead, original Evil Dead uh, car. But I, I know that they did. He was, a, he was a writer in it, according to this. So oh, okay, Sam so maybe Ford so maybe he did give a blessing to it. So maybe it was. Maybe it was an actual uh, reference to the original movies and because that is one of the most iconic things of that movie, of the first What's two that? movies. Yeah, that's a character. Car. Yeah, that's yeah, a character. I mean, even in the series, it's a character. Now, uh, did you notice, like, you've seen Cabin in the Woods or have you? Cabin, Cabin in the Woods, Woods is with uh, Chris Hemsworth. Thor. Yeah, Thor. Yes. yes, yes, I have. With Bradley yeah. Whitford. So, so that whole scenario of, of why these things happen. You know, what was funny is watching that now after seeing that, I'm like, oh, there's the gas station scene. There's there's the creepy neighbor scene. And it and it was it was awesome seeing that. Uh the you know, the language in the older movie, you know, doesn't hold up as well, you know, as far as that goes, because it was based in the 80s, right? Uh so the newer movie had that on it a little bit. Uh as far as for you know liking the movie Evil Dead, I didn't hate it. It wasn't you know the 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 remake. I didn't hate it, and I thought there were some good things about it. So I I enjoyed that. I watched it, but in no ways it's not the best movie. Well, um, and, and they they tried to respawn the movie telling right. Like they, I, if I'm not mistaken, from what I can remember, they were trying to do the reboot of the Evil Dead's franchise, where it wasn't just going to be a one off movie. But when this came out, it didn't do as well because, as I said, uh, Bruce Campbell wasn't in it. And I remember at this time, Bruce Campbell was doing the circus, and I did some research on this beforehand. He was doing the circuits, and he was talking about the fact that um, he doesn't think that if it might have been after when this movie came out and right after uh, the TV show came out as well, where he said Evil Dead does better as a franchise, a TV franchise, than it does with the movies because you can tell longer stories. And with Evil Dead, it's a two and a half hour movie. That's it. You don't get much longer than that. Exactly. No, I agree. Now, fun fact for you. So I was listening to uh, a, a, a YouTube video, watching YouTube rather, and I can't remember his name, but it was a gentleman that paid, played Freddy Krueger, right? And Robert he was England. About, yes, Robert England. He was talking about the, at one point, they were going to have Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. I don't know if you ever knew this in the, in the genre stuff. They were trying to get there for the longest time. And but when it was finally, like, really close, it was right after Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man movie that he did. So he was, like, the top dog in Hollywood, one of the top dogs, if you will. And he said, well, Ash has to win. And when he, as soon as he said, Ash has to win, the rest of them, you know, the, the other you know, big directors and stuff were like, no, 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 we can't do that. So that's why it all fell apart. But, but Robert England's like, he goes, I just wanted to make the movie. <laughs> He's like, I didn't care who wins. <laughs> he goes, just make the movie. It would have been well, great. That, so, so that, that was a missed, a missed opportunity, I think. I, uh, and this is a tangent on just myself here for a second here, but Freddy versus Jason does not get the respect that I think it deserves. I enjoyed that movie. I think we've talked about it. I think we talked about it on our Halloween episode, but I want to make mention of it right now because they had so much plans for that of movie yeah. because if I'm not mistaken, they had the Ash versus Jason versus Freddy. They had the Ash versus Jason versus Mike Myers. They had like a horror cinematic universe that they were trying to start and yes. it just fell apart because people just didn't like the movie because they felt it was too campy that's what jason and freddie were all about it's about exactly. the campiness it's about freddie krueger like saying the most stupidest things in the world and killing people and yes. jason just getting shot and still <laughs> killing people still getting brought back to life again and again and yeah, I, I I enjoyed that 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 movie. I, I like that. Uh, so last thing I'll say on the Evil Dead remake, uh, I really liked the nail gun scene. I think that they did a better job of that, where the person shooting the nail gun 
that 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 ever when the you know kept getting hit with the nail gun that that was just i was like that was a good nail gun scene that reminded me of uh a couple other movies since that, that have had that but I, I enjoyed that and, and thought that was just you know again just something extra they did um i didn't like the dogs and cats because i don't like whenever something happens like that so that 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 to me is like oh yeah. In, in fact, I made sure in, in, in so far in all of my books, no animals have died. No animals have been died while Dave's writing this book. So I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I like I, animals better than people. I, I will honestly say this, and this is the great thing about my show. We can go off on tangents and that's the great thing. I agree with you. Like killing animals, like I, there's, there's a line that I will never cross and killing animals yeah. is one I'm like, okay, understandable like hey if you want to decapitate somebody go right ahead if you want to like hang them all up day by long tree, go right ahead if you want to burn them out of steak go right ahead but you kill like a like four-year-old dog i'm like bring it bring it like yeah. a two dollar bill like let's go outside right now but well, yeah. just so everybody's everybody's clear who's listening to this he's talking about in fiction yeah. <laughs> yes yes yeah. Oh, even in, even in re reality, if you're killing a dog just for the fun of it, let's go outside right now. Oh, yeah. The only yeah. time that I will ever say that I like cheered for the fact that a, like animal died, of course it's going to be Cujo. Of course it's going to be Cujo when you're like, damn right, kill that dog. <laughs> well, fun, fun fact, I won't watch Cujo. It's, what? It's, I, I, I've never seen Cujo. It, it's, I like Stephen King. Like all You've read the, the book though, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I won't watch it because I'm like, I don't want to see, a, I, I, I'm not an animal getting killed fan when it comes to that. So so I'm like, you know, it's just going to make me mad. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, okay, so let's let's go back in time. 1974, okay? So this is where, you know, people were wearing the giant bell bottoms. <laughs> they, they had, yeah, <laughs> and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974. Uh they did have a gas station scene, the warning scene. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I'd forgot all of that. You know, the people who did the Cabin in the Woods did a great job of pulling all those things out. Uh, the movie itself, looking back at it, was as good as I remembered back then, which it wasn't very good. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was slow. It was interesting. It had a couple really good scenes like the grandpa at the table was surprising and all of that when it cuts the girl's finger that was that was a complete surprise that was just that's awesome the dinner table scene actually with with his family was a was a great scene just in general when you're thinking about the different characters that are there and the diversity of the characters as far as for their their mental abilities if you will that was an awesome scene. Uh, but as far as for the, the movie itself, you know, for today's generation, I think they would find it slow uh, because it took a long time before. It, it was a lot of buildup, if you will, right? But, and this is this, I, I'll give, I'll give the 19, the, the very first Texas Chainsaw Massacre its due because yes. that's how stories were told, right? The, the I idea- disagree. The, the idea that we have to tell everything in the first act, it, 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 it pisses me off to some extent because yes. I want the buildup, right? Like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like you literally didn't like get to the action packed information until the last act. And yes. like another great example of that is Jaws, right? Like yes. you literally the whole time you're like, okay, when's it gonna happen? When's it gonna happen? And then it comes out and you're like, holy fudge, like yep. this has scared the crap out of me. And that's what I miss about today's, uh, the, the movies, the horror films of today, because you look at the, 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 the... <laughs> I, I don't even want to say it was a movie because honestly it wasn't the, the newest Texas Chainsaw Massacre, comparing it to the 1974 version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't know what studio exec got a hold of this movie. It's a yes. <laughs> but what the hell, guys? Like you took you 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 tried your hardest to make a good movie, and it seemed like you went so camp 
it went back in time to being bad and it yes. went back into being a B movie where it wasn't supposed to be a B movie. And I just, I was furious. I sat there for the entire movie and I went, what the hell am I watching right now? Because this is not Texas Chainsaw Massacre at all. It was exactly. so woke. It was so stupid. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, 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 so I have, uh, in fact, if I ever get to be like a you know person who talks about movies all the time and ratings person or whatever, Cisco and Ebert type guy, uh, I'm going to have a fast forward meter. So I hate to say it, but I did not watch that entire movie. I like you. I like you a lot, but I'm not going to watch. I, so I'm like going, okay, this person's talking. I hit fast forward. I'm like, they're still talking. I hit fast. They're still, you know, and so, so I probably missed about a good 20 minutes of the movie. Uh, I, I did have to rewind a couple of times to see what they said right before that something did happen. Uh, but that was one where I, you know, and, and also to give the first one its due, don't get me wrong. You know, I said I liked it as much as I did the first one. It's just not in my top 10 of horror movies, right? It's one I'm glad I saw. I, I enjoyed it a lot when I was a kid, but it just wasn't in my top 10. Um, but as far as for the new one, I mean, was there anybody in there that you liked? No, I actually like no. Texas. I like the guy with chainsaw better than anybody else, to be honest, because he was getting rid of him. But no. there was no single character that I'm like, yay, I hope they make it. You know, the whole time I was thinking, like, okay, kill everyone. Like if, yeah. like if, like, at, like I, 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 I jokingly say this, but if an explosion went off in that move in that like in that town, I'd be like, okay, yeah. now there's something to talk about in this movie because the, and you you hit the hammer right on the nail. I like dialogue that is going to move the story forward. Yes. The dialogue in this movie destroyed this franchise. And I don't know if it's because the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise is so hard to reboot because they have tried numerous times to reboot this franchise and they cannot get it right. I'm just looking at the list right now. So they had Leatherface in 2017, Texas Chainsaw 3D in 2013, Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre, the beginning, 20, 2006, Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, 2003, Next Generation, 1995, because, well, that was Star Trek year, so everything was the next generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Trek, uh, Star Trek, Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, 1990. They have tried numerous times because I think they were trying to make uh, Leatherface the Mike Myers, the... Yeah the Freddy Krueger's, the Jason, but in sometimes you don't need to expand a franchise. Sometimes just leaving it after three movies is okay. Uh, case in point, uh, Hellraiser. Hellraiser, yes. they had a few movies. They, they did good and they went, okay, we're stepping back and we're not doing any more unless exactly. they're about to. And if they're about to, I need to go talk to that studio exec right now. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's, it's like, you know, if you look at, and, and I was just looking up the names of the different ones, but like uh, Three from Hell and Devil's Rejects and all that, right? You know, if, if, if you go to those movies, you know, that, that's a perfect continuation of a story. I mean, it, 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 it was just great. It's the way they, they should have did it. In, in this movie, you know, and I, I like all of those movies on, on the Three from Hell. It's a little bit different as far as that goes, but still the slasher type family. Uh, but on this latest Texas Chainsaw, they they missed the whole point about his family dynamic. You know, the, you know, having his mother and and that was what thirty seconds she was in the show. They could have did so much more with that. You know, they didn't have. You know, like I said, there there wasn't. You know, it was basically like you said. It's hey, here's Jason. You know, and he's got a chainsaw now, or you know, yeah. or, or Mike Myers, he's got a chainsaw. And that's it. No, not not going to be talking. No dialogue. No, no, no. You know, interesting things. That dinner scene in the first one, as I said, that was creepy. I remember that to this day. But it was creepy, and it moved the story forward. I yes. I, I, I hark back to this, and I, I I I like if if a studio executive in Hollywood is listening to this right now, take this advice. Just because we know the story, doesn't mean we know the story. Yes. And, I, and I say that saying that this, you, you said it correctly when you said that like the mother was in it for 30 seconds. You could do a whole first movie 
on just their relationship of how they become the Texas chain Leatherface, how they become yeah. Leatherface, uh, like the dynamic of the mother, and then going to the wheel and deal. And this, this is why I think uh, Nightmare, uh, not Nightmare on Elm Street, Fr Friday the 13th does so well. The first movie is not about Jason. The first right. movie is about Jason, but it's about the dynamics of how Jason was born. And this was back in the 80s when this came out. So yes. maybe, just maybe, reboot the franchise, but tell the story that needs to be told and not don't assume everyone knows how Leatherface became Leatherface. Yeah, and, and the whole thing about where his chainsaw was and all the good stuff, and I won't give away spoilers, although I'm not encouraging anybody to watch the movie, <laughs> uh, but, but how did it get there? How did that, that mother figure talk him into putting it down for however many years it's been because basically this was supposed to be after the first movie here it is again and and in today's time he's still he's still going around society but he's not actually carrying the chainsaw i forgot and, and, about and that it, idea too i completely yeah, forgot it, that this is not this is not a spawn of the third movie this is it forget movie two through eight this is movie exactly. two now. And it's like, huh? It's movie two. I forgot about that because that's exactly right. Because I went and into it looking at it like all the other movies had all already the happened. Others. Yeah. And, right. and for me, it's one where I, you know, like I said, I, I like them, but it was one where I would watch that, you know, the other Texas Chainsaw movies with friends where you're joking around and laughing more than anything else. So I don't remember those as much as, as, as I did the first one because it was just, you know, you saw it in the theater and you're not, and people weren't talking, um, you know, at least back in those days. Uh, so yeah, so I'm not a fan of the new one. Uh, again, didn't like anybody. You, you, make, you make a mention of that, and I wanted to. I want to get your opinion on that because here in Canada, we have seen a. And let's take COVID nineteen out of the picture right now. Let's just say that it just doesn't happen, and last two years was a blip. Do you think people go to movies for horror films anymore? Because I I, I look at the movie stats here in Canada, and I'm seeing. People don't go see the drama movies, the comedy movies. They go see the action pack, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They see the like the DC comic movies. I I I can't tell you the last time I saw a horror film in theater, and that's just me being me. With the rise of streaming, I am seeing more of a resurgence of people sitting at home with their popcorn in their lap, where you don't have to listen to ten kids behind you sh chatting up your ear. Do you think that more people are less inclined to go see horror films in theater? I I would have to say yes, right? You have you have to say yes, but then you also have to look at the dynamic now of of where some of the people are who are my age, right? So we have the nostalgia factor. So I I went and saw Ghostbusters in the theater, right? Because it was something of I wanted that experience because I remembered it from before. So I think if they make a good horror movie then i think they could bring people back into it i think that that's you know they they tried with 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 some of the others but they they've not hit the mark as, as far as things go especially these i mean I'm, i i, I would have really regretted paying 20 dollars plus popcorn fees plus everything else for texas chainsaw the new one i i would just have made me mad uh, but i uh well, i look I, at some of the movies I, like the escape ahead. room for example Escape okay. Room was a good movie to see in the theater, right? Uh, the remake of Dawn of the Dead, the not the one that's been recently, but the one that was about 15 years ago, uh, 10, 15 years ago, something like that. Um, I saw that one in the movies and I was glad I saw it in the theater because of the sound effects and everything else. Plus for that one, actually, it was in inner city Chicago. I was there for business. And just the way people were talking around me in the movie added so much to it. Cause it was like, there's one scene where the lady's getting ready to lean down to hear if somebody's heart's beating or whatever. And behind me, I hear, girl, don't you do that. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I love it. So, so that was more of an interactive, interactive thing that I just loved and, 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 and all of that. But I, I do think you're right. I think the, the problem is the quality. Plus it's something of, I don't know that people nowadays are, in theater ready for those slow burns which is kind of sad you know because they're going to be going oh it's this movie's taking a while let me check my phone here see what see what i got going on you know yeah. you're not entertaining me every 30 seconds 
Well, and that's the thing with the rise of things like TikTok and Instagram, where you get a 30 second clip and that's what you get. I, I, I can honestly say the last time I went to the movies was when I saw the movie uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu in theaters. <laughs> yeah. And that's just because I was a Pokemon fan and I wanted to see it in theaters and I dragged my husband yeah, to it. Yeah. And let's be honest, that was an experience and a half and I'll never do that again. But oh, Ryan I, Reynolds was in it, right? Exactly. Canadian. Got to gotta support the Canadian boy <laughs> here in Canada. So I, I give theaters a chance, but I can honestly say no movie today has capitalized my attention to go, I want to see that in theaters. I want to go out, spend $50, and maybe that's the other issue is because I just, I can't think to myself, I'm going to go spend $50 on a movie when I can watch it at home, where I can stream it for $9.99, where I get 8 million other movies as well on Netflix. My, my right. concern is, because I've gone to the movie theaters to pick up popcorn, because come on, popcorn movie popcorn's the fucking best, part by part. I, I hope that Hollywood isn't trying to recapture what it had in the past by introducing all these old horror films that are sort of telling a new story of how the horror films are because I don't think it's going to work in my opinion. It's not. I mean, look how bad the mummy failed. They basically said, Hey, let's turn that into an action movie. You know, God, with, that movie. Oh my God. It was horrible. <laughs> Tom, just don't, just don't do it. Please just say no. Uh, so I, I think you're right. I think they, they're trying to make it, it, in order to be popular at the theater, it has to be you know big Marvel Cinematic Universe thing. It has to be an action movie, something like that. And I, unless you do like you know an Aliens or some sort of horror movie that has enough in it throughout, I don't know that you're going to be able to have a, a a cinematic success in the theaters, right? Uh, you couldn't do Hellraiser now, the original Hellraiser. You, it, it, people because it, it was such a slow burn and people aren't going to put up with that now so it's a sad but you're right and, and we'll, 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 if that's a whole nother episode for itself just to talk about the movie industry and it's failure to because we are still pumping out movies that are two and a half hours long when the yeah. average attention span is 30 seconds. So <laughs> movies need to start telling stories in a shorter period of time because after the first hour, I'm usually checked out. I'm going, okay, guys, if you haven't captivated, captivated me, look, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like you said, I fast forward it and I tried to watch it. I tried to watch it. And I was I, like, I tried. what is going on? Because I, I, I've said this numerous times on this show. Because you have two and a half hours does not mean you need to <laughs> fill two and a half two hours. Half hour. <laughs> exactly. Cut, leave, leave a little more on the cutting room floor. Uh, all right. So yeah. let's, let's do the, the, the last one that we were going to, that we agreed to talk about. And we had other stuff too we can talk about. But uh, The Thing. Okay. So Kurt Russell's The Thing was technically a remake of the original thing. I remember seeing that black and white one. I remember being scared when they poured the gasoline on it and, and all that good fun stuff. Or no, it was electricity, wasn't it? I, I can't, it was a long time ago. But so I remembered the, ori the original one fondly. So when I'm watching the Kurt Russell one again, it's actually my favorite Kurt Russell movie, believe it or not. I don't know if that's a sad thing or not, but I, I like I, that movie. I, I am like sorry, we need to end this conversation right oh, now. No, oh, How no. dare you not say Stargate was not his best movie ever? <sighs> Stargate <laughs> Stargate was awesome. Okay, we can have well, we'll go, maybe I'll write a sci fi book one day and we'll go to that. There but you yeah, go. I, I love Stargate. Yeah, Stargate was perfect. Uh, Stargate was one of the movies that was a perfect movie. It was just, it had everything you wanted. So I'll give them that. Uh, but Kurt Russell, I, 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 I forgot at the very beginning where they showed the UFO crash. Again, spoilers for anybody <laughs> uh, for not seeing it, but I forgot they showed that in the original movie. And I don't know if maybe, you know, there was a lot of times where I went to the movies late or we started <laughs> movies talking. And if, if I can't remember if I watched that in the theater or not first, but I just didn't remember seeing the UFO crash. So that to me was a surprise when it turned out to be the alien thing in the, in the first movie. Uh, the second movie, I, I kind of liked how they did that. And, and I enjoyed that, that part of it. Uh, but as far as the, uh, the first movie, you know, the special effects, they, they weren't great compared to today, but they weren't bad. 
it held up. Yeah. I mean, uh, not having a cell phone wasn't a big thing, right? Because you're out in the middle of nowhere and not having communications, which a lot of times in today's movies, if you don't have a cell phone, it's, it's, it's difficult. Well, uh, most of the times in today's movies, if you don't have a cell phone, people are going, this is fake. <laughs> yes. Everyone has a cell phone now. <laughs> Everyone has a cell phone. Uh, but the characters in the old one, were such good characters and strong characters everybody from the crazy doctor to to everything else so that i really enjoyed that about the original movie as well, much as i enjoyed the monster and all that stuff and that brings up a good point do you think uh, character development is as important as it is then as it is today because you you kind of hit the hammer on the nail when we talked about texas chainsaw massacre even in the 2011 uh remake of the thing character development wasn't there for a lot of these movies it's hey here's character a and b they're best friends yay not in the like 1980s and 1990s it's, here's jack jack likes to run jack likes to jump jack likes to go exploring jack and jill are best friends and they told the story and character development today is so non-existent. And again, going back to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you, 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 you said there was no person you could root for because there was no character development. Do you find that character development in the 80s when things like Kurt Russell's The Thing was released, they took time and they actually told the story from a character's perspective instead of just telling a story to tell a story? Oh, I, I think they, I think they did. In fact, if, if you think about the, the the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, that part of the the very beginning of it, they're riding on that in that van talking about all kinds of different other stuff mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with what was going to happen. Uh, Cabin in the Woods, even if you remember that movie at the very beginning, where they're in the dorm room or whatever, she's talking about breaking up with the one, the one professor dumped her or whatever, had nothing really to do with the whole plot but it added character development to that. It, it gave you more information about the character so that when the Thor guy, you know, when he, when he, you know, acts like a meathead or whatever, you know, muscle bound meathead, whatever the one guy calls him, uh, when, when he acts like that, you remember the fact that he was telling her about all of those different philosophy books or whatever it was. You remember him discussing that. And so you're like, yeah, you're right. He did change personalities. Now, we knew why he changed personalities because of Cabin in the Woods, but it was one of, we saw that. The same thing in, in, in the Thing movie, when the people start acting different and they start, it, 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 was, it was almost like that Twilight Zone episode where they, they say there's gonna be, there's an alien in the town and the townspeople go crazy and the aliens are outside of town going, yeah, that was an interesting experience, <laughs> experiment, wasn't it? You know, and, and, and it, but it was like that where they, you, know, you didn't trust anybody and that was the you know they, they did it so well in that first movie uh, yeah I, I, I enjoyed that I, I agree and I, I will be honest I, I remember the Kurt Russell movie I did not watch it before this I, I watched the 2011 version of the thing so I'm only going by that and I, I said this at the beginning of the episode just because I you don't don't try and reinvent the wheel when you're trying to make horror films. If it works, leave it alone. There are certain movies you just don't remake. And for me, and you might disagree with me wholeheartedly, and that's the great thing about us. We can disagree and we can still be friends here, David. I didn't like the 2000 remake, 2011 remake of the thing. I It, it might be going back to that, like, I, I, I love the 80s nostalgia of campy yes, yes. horror films like horror films that made you jump even knowing you see the bad guy you know the bad guy's about to do something stupid or something kill somebody or injure somebody but you still go i'm gonna be scared shitless because of this here it's okay okay here's the here here's here's the equation horror film that we have come to know uh act one is this act two is this act three is okay how do we solve a problem like maria where in the 80s, it was act one is this, act two is this, act three is everyone run because no one's about to die. Everyone's about to die here. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it, it, I, I liked the movie. It's not in my top 
50 of horror movies as far as for the thing we uh, it's 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 a, i'm sorry it's, i have to interrupt here i love how you you talk about movies because you always say not in my top 10 this one not in my top 50 i can't wait for the day that we talk about a movie you're like it's not my top movie <laughs> like what do you mean top movie you know of all the movies i've ever watched not the top of them. exactly well actually i could say that the bottom movie was probably the remake of texas chainsaw massacre massacre maybe it's, it's very close to the bottom uh but but uh, you know it there was a couple things in this one that i that i think it makes it worth watching so let me say it that way to people it, it you will if you've seen the first one and you enjoyed it watch this one about a year later you'll probably enjoy it you won't you won't hate yourself for watching it uh, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, you will hate yourself for watching it. Uh, sorry, sorry, kids. Uh, the subtitles at the very beginning, I thought that was an interesting thing for, for the other place. I thought it added some authenticity to it, hearing their language. I kind of like that. Uh, there's a show on Netflix flicks that's, uh, I want to say it's, it's either Thor or Norse Gods or something. I'll, I'll send you a link to it, but it's done very well, but you can tell it's, it's dubbed. And I enjoy that, but I actually kind of like to watch it in, in the native language because you, you hear the authentic, authenticity in the people's voices. Uh, but that's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting show, but it's, it's more about Norse gods coming to earth and, and like, you know, they're still, they're on earth nowadays and Thor's like a 17 year old kid type, type thing. Uh, but because all of them were reborn or what have you. Uh, but long story short, I, I, liked a few things in this. I liked the subtitles. I thought that was interesting. I liked how they introduced the ship as far as falling through the ice. I thought that was kind of an yep. interesting twist to it, right? It's like, hey, because if you think about this, it's really a prequel to the other, right? Um, it's, you know, I, I liked that part of it. Uh, and I liked how the creature was introduced versus they instantly knew, knew you know, how powerful it was. You know, they, they in, in this one, you know, in the first one, you weren't sure how powerful the creature was. In this one, it's, <laughs> yeah, it just blew up it's through the ceiling. Quite Every, obvious. <laughs> yes, everybody knows. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, all three of the movies we, we agreed to talk about earlier, the first ones were better. Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit CalgaryCaesarFest.com and get your tickets today. There might be better horror movies out there than 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 those that we could pick from the 80s or 90s even uh but but of the three that you know the, the six movies the originals hold up better than the the remakes so before we start jumping off onto what's new in your world i want to ask the age-old question because i think there's a lot of people who have listened to the last hour and said wow these guys really like the originals compared to the new ones what movie franchise do you think, and this is just sticking with the horror franchise here, what movie franchise do you think rebooted itself or rebranded itself and did a better job in the rebranding than it did in the original? Oh, that's interesting. I did not prepare him for this question, so I'm glad I asked. Uh, I would have to say the Walking, the Walking Dead TV series versus the Dawn of the Dead type movies. If you go back and say Walking Dead is, is a continuation of Dawn of the Dead and all that good kind of stuff, I would say that they did the best job. Uh, I would also go to say, while I loved Dawn of the Dead, loved the original, loved the mall, loved that interaction with all of the different people and, and the scene where the guy's jumping on the Mack truck and gets, you know, gets bit or what have you, you know, that, that, that was a soul crushing moment for me as a fan, right? Cause I was like, oh my God, they just, you know, I, I, I was invested in that guy, right? That, that, that's how invested in the character they got me. Uh, the remake they did of that, you know, the Dawn of the Dead one, that was just 
awesome. It, it introduced new things, which I thought was great to the zom zombie genre. You had your first track star zombies, if you remember that, where the woman's driving down the road and you see this guy running like crazy and you're like, whoa. So, so I would have to say of all of the movies, uh, that one is that in the horror genre. And if we can include alien movies in the yep. horror genre, then the Aliens versus Predator the one with the gentleman Walton Goggins from Justified. Uh, he's in a, a, a movie that is uh, where they dump them all on this planet. I thought that was a great way to do the movie. I enjoyed that one. Uh, I, that wasn't an Aliens versus Predator. I think that was a purely a Predator movie. Uh, so I enjoyed those. Those were really good ones I thought they did. I was trying to think of my answer because I was I was switching back and forth because I was going to say the Friday the 13th um, uh, no sorry not Friday the 13th the Nightmare on Elm Street but then I remember how bad the remake uh, Nightmare on Elm Street that they did without Freddy uh, without a Robert England as Freddy Krueger and I wanted to scream and I was like that was really bad why would I even think that was a good movie because it was not it was a horrible 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 movie a horrible horror film as i would say and i and it goes back to the idea where i've talked about this on numerous occasions is i don't think there's been one that i can point to that says you know what this was better than the original because i like the 80s camp and i say that and i hit the horse with a bat here because I just liked how horror films were told in the 80s and the 90s yes. and even in the 70s because they had purpose of that scare jump. And maybe it yes. was because I was uh, actually, you know what? That's untrue. The new Pet Cemetery was fucking fantastic. Pardon my friend. Was it? With I, John I haven't Lewis. seen it yet. I've got to see that. Go watch it because I watched the original. Eh. I watched the yeah. new one with John Lithgow. Fuck that man can act. Pardon my French. <laughs> he, he, is, he is awesome. I, I like him. Uh, so I've got a question for you. Uh -oh. okay? So, okay. so, so this, this is on, on horror movies in general. So, so now this one was in 2008 that came out as mine. Uh, but, and I'll tell you my answer after I ask the question. Uh, what new type of horror movie or new genre, if you will, do you think that they did such a good job and it was surprising to you that you were like, wow, why didn't somebody do that in a zombie, in a, in a, not a zombie, but in a, in a book before? Uh, for me, uh, it's a book and a movie, The Ruins. Uh, have you seen that? That's the one that has that Jonathan Tucker in it uh, and, and a, a couple others, I can't remember. It was made in 2008. And basically they're down in South America and they decide one day to go out to these ruins and it turns out it's it's a ecological horror movie if you will uh eco, eco terror type thing and it's it's a monster film and it was just such a great new concept when it, when i when i when i watched it um and and when i read the book i actually read the book first on that one and the movie didn't disappoint me right because a lot of times you'll read the book and then you watch the movie and you're like yeah <laughs> why, why didn't i just stick with my with my imagination uh, but for me, I thought that was one of the few new things that came out. Uh, and like maybe Candyman, Candyman, the first one, I thought was was unique. So, so. this might, I don't want to say the franchise was unique to me and it really spoke, spoke to me, but I want to say the very first movie in the franchise. And that is the Saw franchise. Yes. I loved that that movie that very first movie because it go it harkens back to like literally everything i've said here in the last hour and that is beginning middle end act one two and three act one you're already in you have a backstory you're telling it throughout the first act act two how are we going to solve this problem act three there's no plot there's no armor for any character anyone could die you do not cheer for anyone because someone that you are cheering for is going to die and I yes. love that part of the whole Saw franchise and the, the Saw movie was we are going to bring in some big names who are you going to think you're going to love them, but you do not root for them because they will be on the chomping block. And I love that part of movies. And that was the first time I ever saw a movie when I went, okay, I like what they've done. 
they've brought in nice. people and they've said, you know what, we're not going to like give you the expectation that X, Y, and Z is going to survive. Carrie Hughes, like Princess Bride. Literally, yes. the whole time you're like, okay, this guy's a good guy. No, he's an asshole. He's literally yeah. an asshole. And you find that out. And the twist at the end, if you've not seen it, spoilers, where Jigsaw is literally laying in the, the, the room the entire time. Brilliant. Because I like a good twist. And that was, yeah. if not my doubt, probably one of my favorite movies. And I would say probably in the horror films, probably my taking a line out of yours, out of my top tens. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Now, did you, uh, did you see the latest spinoff of that? I, I have I not seen it. Jigsaw yet. I want to because I want to see how they do it, but exactly. uh, you watch my, it with your fingers crossed, right? Well, exactly because I, while I love horror films, I love suspense films as well, yes. and I love like actually we didn't even talk about that. Jeez, man, I was gonna say like I I loved uh, M Night Shyamalan's The Sixth Sense, right? unbreakable yes. where you watch yes. movies and you're like okay i know what's going to happen you know what's going to happen then you twist the entire movie on your head you're like okay i'm glad that i watched this and that's yes. what i saw with saw right and that's what i like with uh um I, I don't like the new scream movie but i like the scream franchise where you are literally yeah. trying to play sherlock holmes while you're watching these movies of who is it why are they here how do we solve this and the entire time you're trying to play it and you don't get to that point. And with the slasher films, like we've talked about with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you're like, okay, okay. When's this person <laughs> going to die? And even in the new one, and I, I had, oh, I'm going to spoil this. Even in the move, the new one, they're like, oh, he's dead. You're like, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we exactly. know he's not dead. Okay. No, he's not dead. <laughs> don't even pretend it. And then, and then you know, now, as far as other horror movies, I do you ever watch the cube? The one where they're in that in the cube, and basically there's different doors, and depending on which door you go through, something really bad may happen. Like you, you might, you know, there might be lasers or something else. If you've not seen the cube, watch that movie. It's it's really good. Uh, there's a couple of them after it, even cube squared. And I saw one that was actually where people were standing in a circle and, and and in the circle it was it was something where just a random person would die and i was like oh wow that might even be called the circle and that was just an interesting um uh, yes yeah, circle movie yeah that, that was it that was a very interesting it was something different in a movie right it's like you know, in the, in the circle movie, everybody's standing in a circle and it's like a psychological thriller where somebody's going to die and you're still standing there. The people aren't running, you know, and in the cube, they're trying to figure out the way out. And, and that was, I, I really enjoyed that, that movie. That one even had a sequel where you're watching it from the people who are watching the people in the cubes perspective. So that was interesting as well. So some other good ones for you to check out. I, thank you. And all of these, I've written down two here now, the ruins and the cube. So for anyone who's watching, we will have David back on to talk about these movies later on in the year <laughs> to talk about this. And of course, we'll have him back on for our annual Halloween episode where we talk about horror films on Halloween. Um, yes. I, I, before we go, I want to ask you this. What's your opinion on these this, this whole found footage horror films? Like the paranormal activities, the uh, like uh, the oh my god, I can't even Blair Witch Project, the very first one, which was fantastic, but then exactly, but then everyone uh, yeah, yeah. was doing found. Then we saw Cloverfield and Cloverdale and all that shit. What's your opinion? Because I, I despise them. Like yes. I do not get the attraction to them, but Hollywood seems to be pumping them out further and faster than I've ever seen. Yeah. So for me, in my books, I try to not go back in time too often, right? I might have a quick flashback of something. Somebody might mention something that they did in the past, that sort of thing. Because when I'm watching a, a movie and or reading a book and, and like I tried to, I was going to do two extras, but I just couldn't get through the first one. So I tried to get through The Grudge with Sarah Michelle Gellar, which I like her in general, Buffy great show, fun, fun, super fun show. 
uh, Angel spinoff, really good as well. But anyway, so I, I enjoyed those types of campy things. So I watched that grudge movie. And that's the one where basically a nurse gets infected with some kind of spirit or whatever. It's over in Japan. You know, if somebody gets killed horribly, the, the, the remnant of them stays around, right? It's a really bad scene. <laughs> well, what, what I like, what I didn't like about it was they would tell you, they told you the story to a certain point, And then all of a sudden they jumped back in time and you're watching the footage of what happened to get to that point of somebody else. And I was like, okay, I can keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm Dave's not, not going off the edge. And then they go a little bit further in the today's timeline. And then all of a sudden they jump further back again. I'm like, oh God, why? And so after the second jump back, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm out. And so for the clover fields and the found footage and stuff like that, that's sort of that same thing. The shaky camera, I'm like, why? You know, if you want to have 30 seconds of the shaky camera that builds up to the rest of your movie, yes. Uh, now, just with that said, if any director wants to direct any of my books as a shaky cam movie, I am all in. It's all about the money, right? So, so yes, yes. Bring me the money. Call Dave. Uh, so, but as far as in general, I, I haven't found one of those shaky cam footage movies that I liked. I didn't even like the shaky cam footage of Private Ryan in, in Saving Private Ryan. I thought that, that you know, yes, it might have been how war is and all that good fun stuff, which is horrible, but I just didn't, I want the camera to stay where I can see what's going on versus the other. Uh, I also don't like horror movies where they on purpose make everything so dark so that you know something's going to jump out. I'm like, yeah. Yes, it's fun to see the people walking with flashlights and stuff, but make it a little bit brighter, you know, and, and scare me that way. You know, I, that's one of the things I like about Escape Room, that series, right? It's everything's right in the open. <laughs> it's something bad is getting ready to happen. You but know something bad's going to happen. It's just how is it going to happen and how are we going to kill these people? <laughs> exactly. So um, I got one other, okay. one last, hor this is a horrible movie. Uh oh. Horrible movie when it comes to, everything today's society is based on so let me phrase it that way did you ever see the movie mother's day from back in the 70s i think it was uh, i have a feeling it might have been 1980 I'm it little, is a i'm pulling horrible horrible slasher movie when i say horrible i mean the things that happen in it the acting the director the director the scenes are so creepy and so it's it's basically it's again the thing that gets you about that one it's a family horror movie the family is killing these people and kidnapping these people and it's just one of that eeriness of you know it's one thing with jason it's one thing with freddie but when you have a family doing stuff with the mother in that one that was a very creepy movie and it was funny, I was watching a show the other day and a director of some of the newer movies, he was saying he watched that movie so many times when he's a kid that he has to force himself not to recreate those scenes in his own movies wow. because he's like, it's, they're built into my brain. And I'm like, that's just awesome. So I did want to mention that one for anybody that wants a you know, horrible retro slasher. And when I say hor horrible, I mean from the content, not the quality. So yeah, that it's, it's so for those who it. are keeping score right now, so three movies that you have to watch before the next time we have David on is, and that's including myself. One is The Ruins, yes. two, The Cube, three, yes. Mother's Day. We will be bringing him back on to talk about these three movies awesome. later on. Um, but before we let you go here, David, because we're past the hour mark, and I want to make sure that our uh, listeners do know you have a book coming out here. You have the yes. third book. I'm not sure if it's in the series or if it's a standalone book, but tell us about, and I want to make sure that I get the name here right, Living Humans? Uh, nope. Actually, it's 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 Bad Humans. It's going Bad. to be coming out. That, that, that one's not released yet. I do have the cover for a notebook that I created. Okay. Bad Humans. Uh, the interesting part of that one is my first book was about shadow people. Yep. Second book was about demons. Third book is about evil people and the evil that they do. And there's a character in it. And is that called 2022? Exactly. <laughs> there's, there's a character in it who inherits a pocket watch. 
and that and the pocket watch people you know are things that has a chain and goes in your pocket imagine that uh and and the pocket watch itself anytime he's near someone who's who's committed something evil right done some sort of evil deed he instantly sees it so you think oh okay that's that's not bad he's seeing it like it's on tv well no that's that's not it he's seeing it from the evil person's perspective and then he's also seeing it from the victim's perspective. So there's one of the characters in there who's, who's you know, who's, who's just evil in general. She's, she's an ambulance. Uh, she works as an, as an EMT. And she's in a small town where they don't have very much business. And she likes the adrenaline rush of saving people. So she tosses bricks off of bridges. And... So when the main character sees that from her side, it's bad. And when I'm writing that from her side, it's bad. But when I see it and write it from the victim's perspective, a family driving back from a spelling bee, seeing the brick hit the, the windshield, all of that things, you know, just like, that was the one where every chapter that I wrote where something bad had happened, I felt like I needed to go take a shower. So I'm hoping that people will get and understand the horror in this and love it. Uh, the other book I have already released uh, is is called Living Death. Living Death. And Living Death is uh, I love zombie movies, love zombie stories, love anything to do with zombies. I've read a ton of them. So the reason I call this a, a love story uh, is is that I'm sort of paying homage to everyone who came before me. And and in this one, the main character he's he's a gruffy old man, you know, maybe similar to myself, uh, but he he finds out he's going to die. And so imagine finding out you're going to die and you only have a year to live, but then the rest of the world dies with you, right? As far as for a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, he's, he's still just going about his day. He's going to die, but the whole world's dying. And he, and, he, and, he, and he finds that out later, but at the very beginning, he decides to take this nice, wonderful road trip with just a random stranger he meets. And so here they are driving across country when the world ends. And so, so definitely check it out. It's, it's a zombie story. Uh, on Kindle uh, and also uh, on Audible, and I, I'm very very proud of this. And it was just fun to write, and and I had, had a great time with that one. So I, I'm gonna. I, I think I've asked you this every single time I've had you on the show, but I'm gonna ask it one more time. Are you okay? <laughs> like these are pretty heavy duty <laughs> comments that you're talking about. Driving home, throwing a brick off a uh, overpass, <laughs> like driving across the country while the zombie apocalypse. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I'm okay. The voices in my head keep telling me I'm okay, you know. And uh, but it's 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 one of those things that that for me, you know, I don't know that horror is about hope, right? I, I honestly don't know that. I, I think for me, it's one of I write stories as they come to me. So so in in all of my stories, I I, I don't plan the stories ahead of time. I just start writing. And so when some of this stuff comes out, I'm like, oh, where did that come from? <laughs> you know, um, you know <laughs> maybe there, time to put up the typewriter and go take a walk with the dog or something. Exactly. Not to give away a spoiler, but there's a, a character in Bad Humans where the evil thing he does is he works in a nursing home and he breaks old people's fingers just for fun. So imagine that evil type of person. So when the evil type of person dies, you're happy as can be. Be in, 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 in this book so so that's that that's one of the things so uh, you know it, it is that one i would say it's more about paying back the evil that people do than, than anything else but but i appreciate you asking and like i said you know we'll definitely you know get get on here again and, and talk movies we'll we'll do our halloween episode um uh, and and don't forget anybody who hasn't watched watch leprechaun because it is <laughs> happy st patty's day Patty's Day. Sorry, I didn't wear green. Somebody will pinch me. <laughs> um, David, as always, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, for those who want to know a little bit more, find out, uh, get his books, scroll down in the show notes, links to his website and social media are there. Get his books, support local authors, support, support indie authors because they do actually create some great stories and sometimes they get overlooked by the big people and you want to make sure you support independent authors and independent podcast hosts. So 
Uh, David, from, uh, from me to you, thank you so much for doing this. It's been an honor and a pleasure, as always. Uh, for everyone here at the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown, have yourself an excellent day, guys. And remember, keep talking. Get out from behind that uh, good old-fashioned Twitter and social media and have a conversation with somebody. I know it's a weird concept, but just talk to somebody. Maybe not talk about breaking fingers at a nursing home, but have a conversation yeah. about maybe Irish people on St. Patty's Day. Talk to you later, guys.